Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Are you guys wondering what this is? Well, it's the engine block of a BMW N52 engine. This engine block is also manufactured using a casting process. However, we do not use sand casting here. Do you know why? It's because we need the engine blocks to have smooth surface finish and an excellent dimensional accuracy. Do we get all these in sand casting? Oh, come on, don't say yes. Anyway, this engine block is manufactured using die casting. This type of casting is categorized under special casting methods. So what are these special casting methods? Let's find out. As we all know, sand casting offers several advantages and various disadvantages. One of these disadvantages is that the sand mold is always destroyed after individual processes. This reduces the speed of production and drives up the cost. To overcome this problem and the disadvantages of sand casting, special casting methods are employed in the industries. Using special casting methods, we can obtain better results at lower costs when compared to sand casting. The limitations of low dimensional accuracy and bad surface finish in sand casting can also be overcome using these methods. So, what are these methods? You'll get the answer now. The special casting methods that we will study about are shell molding, investment casting, ceramic molding, pressure die casting, carbon dioxide molding, and centrifugal casting. Today, we will discuss the principles behind all these casting processes. Without any further ado, let's get into it. We'll start with shell molding. In shell molding, a pattern is mixed with sand and binders to provide a shell-like molding cavity. This is done by the sand which is attached to the pattern. This is due to the action of binders. Then, it is baked to remove the moisture content. Finally, the pattern is removed and the shell is obtained. Shell molding is very popular in industries today. This is because it can produce a wide variety of castings with a close dimensional tolerance and a good surface finish. Another huge advantage of shell molding is that its operational cost is low. Using shell molding, small mechanical parts with low precision can be obtained. Now, let's move to investment casting. In this casting process, we can mass produce patterns by injecting liquid or semi-liquid wax into a permanent dye. With this method, parts with very good surface finish and dimensional accuracy can be obtained. Investment casting is widely used in manufacturing precision equipment, complex geometries, and for precious metals. Now we'll talk about ceramic molding. In this process, permanent patterns made of plastic, wood, metal, or rubber are used. The mold is made by mixing plaster of Paris with talc and silica flour. This is done to improve strength and control the time needed for the plastic to set. Once they are mixed completely, water is supplied to the mixture to obtain a slurry. This slurry is then poured over the pattern. Finally, this pattern is removed and the mold is cured in an oven to make it ready for molten metal. Ceramic molding is used to manufacture impellers, cutters for machining operations, dyes for metalworking, etc. Now, let me ask something first. Have you guys been wondering if the processes mentioned above act under high pressure? Well, the answer is no, but the process that we will now talk about is done under high pressure. Yes, we'll talk about pressure die casting now. In this process, molten metal is poured into steel dies using a runner and gate mechanism. This process of filling the dies takes place under high pressures ranging from 70 to 5000 kg per centimeter square. This pressure is maintained until the molten metal has solidified. After this, the dies are pulled out, the cores are extracted, and the casting is obtained. Pressure die casting is used to manufacture a wide range of products such as automobile components, household appliances, railway and aircraft fittings, bathroom hardware, etc. Now let's move to carbon dioxide molding. In this process, a mixture of dry silica and sodium silicate is produced. This mixture, which is highly flowable, is rammed into the mold box. After this, Carbon dioxide gas is supplied to initiate the hardening of the mold. As a result of this, carbonic acids are produced, which in turn produces silica gel. This silica gel hardens and forms the bonds between sand particles, and hence, the mold is obtained. Okay, are we finished with all the special casting methods? Well, of course not. We'll talk about our last topic of today, that is, Centrifugal casting. In this special casting method, the molten metal is poured into the permanent mold as it rotates about its axis. The speed of rotation varies from 300 to 3000 rpm. As a result of the rotation, centrifugal forces act which push the molten metal towards the mold walls where the metal cools down and solidifies. Centrifugal casting is used to manufacture jet engine compressor cases, petrochemical furnace tubes, etc. Now, we will conclude this session on the casting process. In this video, we talked about the basic concepts of special casting methods. In our upcoming videos, we'll discuss each of these methods in detail. Stay tuned and stay safe. Until the next one, bye.